Hi everyone, my name is Anita Ladhani. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and an energy practitioner. And today's topic is love versus lust. Um, this talk was inspired by my uh, attendance at Boost Church today and Pastor Rich Wilkerson Jr. nailed it again. Um, and he really just sort of connected a lot of dots um, for uh, things that I've been experiencing uh, in my own personal life and uh, with a lot of the clients that I've had the privilege to work with. And so I wanna kinda put my own spin on the topic, but a lot of what I'm going to share with you does come from Pastor Rich Wilkerson Jr. Um, so he starts by, you know, today's sermon by saying, um, you know, what is love versus lust, right? So he says, you know, we, we all um, want to fall in love. And what happens is, you know, this whole idea of falling in love is inherently flawed because he says in any given any other situation in any other context you know falling is considered a bad thing right so you never say oh yeah I fell you know I'm falling you know I fell the example he used was you know he says oh I've, I'm, I'm falling out of my truck well how does that happen you know you don't it's a decision you make right it's not something you just do so um, falling in love is is it just doesn't make sense it's it's when you love someone, it's usually because you grow together uh, with someone. You don't, um, you don't, uh, you know, just um, fall in love. Because in my experience, when you fall in love, you fall out of love. Okay, I've dated men over the years, and every time they say, "Oh, you know, I fall in love really quickly," I usually run for the hills because to me, that's a sure enough sign that if they fall in love quickly, they're gonna fall out of love quickly. Love is something you grow into, right? But it all comes back to, you know, um, who are you? Do you love yourself? And where do you get the love for yourself? You can't, we can't give to someone. We can't be in a partner, in a partnership if we don't love ourselves. We can't give what we don't have. And so a lot of times what we end up doing is we look for someone to fulfill us, right? And that's where... Pastor Rich Wilkerson Jr. talked about the definition of lust. And the definition of lust, when we think of the word lust, we immediately think of, you know, sexual desires. But the definition he said today was amazing because it's not, lust is not necessarily about sexual desires. The definition of lust is using someone as an instrument for your own satisfaction, right? Uh, using someone as an instrument for your own satisfaction. And so that can be not necessarily sexual or physical. It can just be using being with someone and hoping that they will fulfill you versus, you know, looking to fulfill them. So, um, you know, when you one of the things that he talked about was, you know, you can you can you can you cannot love without giving. OK. And so, you know, he talked about, you know, when you when you when you when you're using something um, as it's not intended to be, something is bound to break. So something is bound to break if you use it in a way that it wasn't intended to be. So he gave this he, he gave this example of this you know um, article that he saw online of like 30 you know household objects that we don't maximize our benefit, the benefit of what it was intended to be. And he gave five or six examples and it was really cool. So one of the things he talked about was, uh, you know, like Chinese carry out, right? Um, when you order a Chinese carry out, it comes in a little carton and you know, what do we do? We usually dump it out in a plate or in a bowl. And he says, you know, the way the carton is designed, it's designed where it opens up and it becomes a plate and then we're supposed to be able to put it back together. The other example he gave was of um, a wooden spoon, right? So he says, you know, a wooden spoon is something that because of, you know, uh, the wood, when you put it across a po uh, pot of boiling water. So, you know, when I'm cooking pasta, um, I didn't know this, but this was something cool. Um, it's It's... You put it across the the pot, and it the wood prevents the water from boiling over because the the bubbles burst, and you know um, go back into the water, into the pot, and so the point of this was that you know it's everything has an intended purpose, okay, and the purpose of relationship was never to satisfy our own needs, but but to sharpen us 
to make us grow, to help us learn. But what do we do? We tend to look at other people and, you know, we we want them to fill us up. You know, this whole Jerry Maguire, you know, and that whole scene where, you know, you complete me literally has ruined generations of, you know, women and men because it's completely flawed. This whole notion that someone else can complete us is flawed because no one can give us what we don't have already. <clears throat> so, excuse me. So let's, let's talk about, um, we talked about, you know, falling in love. Um, so just like, you know, you fall in love, that's a flawed statement, you know, falling out of love, walking out of a relationship is something that it doesn't just happen. It's something you decide. So some statistics were, you know, 50% of marriages end up in divorce. Uh, you know, one third of marriages have affairs. You know, I think the numbers are a lot higher. He gave the statistic um, that, you know, pe men between the ages of 24 to 44 have six to seven sexual partners, while women between the ages of 24 to 44 have five to six partner sexual partners. I'm willing to bet that those numbers are a lot higher. Um, and, and I'm not sure, you know, where these stats were from but i'm i'm from my conversations with people that i know that are single and dating those numbers are a lot higher but anyways um so let's talk about uh you know so let's talk about lust for a minute right um lust and i want to talk about uh lust in the sexual context so um gary zukov wrote heart of the soul amazing book. And in that book, he talked about, um, you know, different things that we use to numb and cope our pain. And there was a chapter on food, there was a chapter on, you know, alcohol on shopping. And then there was a chapter on sex. And I thought that was, you know, it describes sexual addiction, right? And it doesn't have to be sexual addiction. It can be any addiction, whether it's drinking, whether it's food, whether it's shopping. You know, specifically, he talked about, you know, so for example, if you are looking to, for someone to fill the void, right? And Pastor Rich talked about, you know, pornography today. He talked about casual sex today. You know, there's there's an epidemic of single people out there who are so hurt. And so what do we do? We go out too afraid to actually be vulnerable with someone else. And so we look for the next best thing. We look for an instant hit like a drug addict, right? So, you know, we, we, get, we, we get into these relationships, you know, and, and we get out of them just as quickly as we've get, gotten into them. When it comes to sex, I, I hear a lot of people doing this, uh, you know, where we will, uh, so the Gary Zukov, the example he gave in the book is, you know, when you are using sex as a drug, it's like when you walk into a room and you kind of lock, say you, you go to a party or, or a restaurant or whatever, and you lock eyes with someone across the room and you misconstrue it as attraction. But what it is, is that that person is also on the same vibrational frequency as you, where they too are flawed and looking for sex to fill a void. And so you guys match uh, that vibrational frequency and it's you think it's, attraction and chemistry and so people end up you know having whether it's a one night stand or whether it's something you know they go on a couple of dates and then they get into bed but the minute you've had sex with someone it's like then all of a sudden you're not interested anymore has that ever happened to anyone or the minute you like get them to kiss you or the minute you get them you know you get them the minute you get them it's like you're not interested anymore okay because again we're looking to fill a void not necessarily grow together. Um, you know, and lust has no vision. It's immediate gratification. Uh, pay, love is patient. Love is kind. Love takes time to build. It has to be on a foundation of mutual trust, mutual respect, open and honest communication, and acceptance, unconditional acceptance and love of the other person. Because every one of us, comes with baggage of some sort or another. No one is immune to it. And so if we go around, you know, with our hypothetical checklist of what we want, and then we, we're never going to find that person. We're always going to discount other people. 
But the reason why we discount other people is because we are so afraid to actually get what we want. We're so afraid that, you know, we, we project it onto other people when it's actually not other people. It's our own in, insecurities. It's our own flaws that we are afraid to reveal and we're afraid to re to get rejected. So what do we do? We just go ahead and reject up front because then it's easier because then we have the upper hand and we're not the ones who got rejected. Um, so the bottom line is, you know, people cannot satisfy us. We have to be satisfied within ourselves and that comes from a deeper connection with our higher power. So um, the question to ask when out going out there is, do you feel, do you love yourself unconditionally? Do you, you know, and it's not that there aren't days, you know, where I, I'm, you know, like I hate my glasses these days. That's the kick I'm on, right? I'm looking to, you know, get LASIK surgery done. I can't wear contacts anymore. It drives me absolutely crazy. So sure, I take pictures without glasses, but you know, in everyday essence, I'm at a point where I'm not happy with my glasses. And so, you know, I, I, I'm going about, you know, sort of projecting that onto other people saying, oh, you know, they're not going to like me with glasses anyways, because look how un unattractive I look. When the reality is I've had plenty of people, you know, men and women who said, my God, you look great with glasses, right? But I'm not ready or willing to hear that compliment because I've made up my mind and I feel so strongly about how, you know, not ugly, but you know, how unattractive or how invisible I feel with glasses. And again, I'm only using this as an example because that's relevant to me right now. It could be anything else. It doesn't have to be something as physical as glasses. It could be, you know, where you're just afraid to get hurt. You're afraid to be vulnerable. You're afraid to get betrayed. You're afraid, you know, that they won't meet your, they won't meet your you know, your, your list of whatever it is that you're going into it with. Um, so the, the bottom line is, you know, that love is about giving, not about taking. Love is about, uh, not about giving you the biggest gain, but love is about you bringing and helping and, and serving the other person, no matter what the relationship is. So um, let me see what else I want to talk about. Oh, and he quickly said, you know, one of the things he talked about pornography was, you know, he said, you know, if, if, loving ourselves and if instant gratification was was did it for us if that was enough for us or if casual sex that instant gratification was enough for us then why is it that you know when people you know finish watching pornography they're left feeling um even you know more alone than they did before they started or they're left feeling you know the word he used was thirsty for more and it's not thirsty for it's not the sex it's the emotional connection it's the intimacy in the emotional sense not the physical sense and that's where i think we're missing you know the the point here um so bottom line the bottom line is that you know love starts from loving yourself love starts from being honest about who we are and what what our own scars are what our own baggage is um you know it's it's uh you know when you've been hurt it's uh very hard to then open up your heart again um and it's it's a challenge you know it's just it is what it is unfortunately but it's about taking time to heal taking time to to connect with your higher power taking time to forgive yourself forgive whoever it is that you know you feel betrayed you and then going into a relationship. Unfortunately, you know, I talk to one too many men and women who jump, you know, they're not even divorced yet, or they've just gotten a divorce and they're already looking to get married. They're already fishing for another relationship. And to me, it's like, that's the most unhealthy thing you can do because you have not resolved, you have not learned, you have not you know, grown from that experience. Uh, and then you're going to take that baggage into the next one and possibly repeat the cycle because no matter where you go, there you are. Like, it's like, you know, when you, there's, there's a phrase, an analogy, right? When you, when you, when you switch seats on the Titanic, it doesn't matter because you're still on the Titanic. It's still going down versus when you want to do different get off the Titanic, right? Get on the rowboat. Don't stay on the Titanic. Switching seats to the front versus the back makes no difference at all.
Um, anyways, I think that's about it. Um, you know, we claim we are in love, but we're actually in lust. Uh, and I think that's very important. You know, we, we need to really determine, you know, is it love or is it lust? And, um, you know, I think that's it. Um, let me see. There were some questions. Comments. Uh, oops. Let's see what we have here. Alicia, Nivia is watching. Naveen's asking, is it love or lust? I think if, is it love, lust, whatever it is, it can't get enough. Okay, Naveen. Kavita. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so Alicia says, I changed my wording from I fell in love to I learned to love him, etc. It became, as you said, a choice. Um, I'm trying to see if I can read the rest of it. It says Seymour. I can't, I can't read the rest of it, honey. Um, all right, guys, I think that's it. So anyways, as always, I present this with the intention to help us think, to help us learn, to help us forgive, to help us grow. And, um, you know, love and light. Take care. God bless.